What's up my ninjas? Dart Frog Ninja here, coming at you like a shuriken. Welcome to the second episode of the Dart Discussion. In this episode, I'll talk about vitamin supplements. Why are they important? Which should you use? Why should you use them? Which do I use? How? And why? Now, without further ado, let's get hopping. Now you might be thinking to yourself, why do frogs need vitamin supplements? Well, let me point out a few things as to why this is important. Now, in their natural environment, dart frogs are active hunters during the day. Their food sources, such as small beetles and other invertebrates, have access to a wide variety of food sources, and because they're outdoors, they also absorb rays from the sun, which helps the insects create essential vitamins, such as D3 and vitamin E, that are beneficial for themselves as well as for the dart frogs. Now, since we can't exactly replicate those conditions, this is why we need to use supplements on our own feeder insects. By using supplements, you're providing your frogs with the necessary vitamins and minerals they need to thrive and breed in captivity. Proper supplementation also helps reduce the frog's risk of contracting any illnesses, as well as ensuring their offspring are healthy and don't develop conditions like spindly leg syndrome, which is a disease that causes underdeveloped legs and are underdeveloped limbs during tadpole metamorphosis. Calcium is extremely important as it aids in proper bone health. Vitamin D3, which helps the frogs in absorbing calcium properly. Vitamin E helps with maintaining a properly working endocrine system. This basically means that it helps the frogs properly secrete hormones into the circulatory system to be carried to organs, such as their pancreas and gastrointestinal tract. Vitamin A, which is responsible for proper growth and development, as well as a healthy immune system and healthy vision. Protein, this is a macronutrient and it helps aid in proper muscle development and continued muscle health. Fat. This is another macronutrient that serves both structural and metabolic functions. Let's talk about what brands to use, guys. There's various brands out there, and I'm going to go over the very, very, I should say, well-used uh, brands of vitamins and mineral supplements. First, we have RepCal Calcium with D3, and then RepCal Herptivite Multivitamin. Those two guys have been used in this hobby since I started. So that's what I was using back when I was like maybe six, seven years old, feeding various other frogs. It's good for frogs and reptiles, so you can use that for whatever. It coats uh, insects as well as vegetables, and it's good to offer them. Then you have Rapashi, Calcium Plus, Vitamin and Calcium Supplement. I used to use that a lot. Um, it's a very good supplement. It's an all-in-one type of supplement. It has your calcium and has your vitamins you need to dust your, all your feeder insects. Then there's Rapashi, Vitamin A Plus. I do use this about maybe once or twice a month for my frogs. And that's strictly a Vitamin A supplement. Next you have Rapashi Super Pig. And that just helps with enhancing the colors of your frogs. It has a certain like algae, I believe, and um, seaweed and um, paprika in it. And that helps enhance the colors of your frogs. And also helps with reptiles as well. So if you have like chameleons uh, that you feed insects to or leopard geckos, you want to enhance that color a little bit, have them pop a little bit, you can offer them the super pig. And then there's Dendrocare, the all-in-one supplement. Um, this has got calcium and all the vitamins you need for your dart frogs and this was specifically made for dart frogs by dart frog hobbyists so it's got everything essential they need and that's what I use now as I've discussed I use Dendrocare and I use Rapashi vitamin A plus now you can mix up any of the combinations of the products that I talked about some hobbyists especially breeders recommend doing this as it helps creates a more balanced vitamin and mineral, mineral supplement diet and it helps with pro, uh, providing your frogs the right 
vitamins and minerals they need to breed and continue to thrive. Now, I want you to keep in mind though that Rapashi Vitamin A is a supplement that should only be given to frogs once or twice a month. If you give it out too much, the vitamin A begins to build up and then it can't be absorbed by your frogs and then it builds into fatty tissue and that can ultimately lead to death in your frogs. So vitamin A, the Rapashi Vitamin A supplement or any other vitamin A specific supplement you use to feed your frogs, use it only once to twice a month. Do not overuse it, otherwise you will cause health issues in your frogs and you could kill them. So keep that in mind, guys. Now, two more important points that I'll talk about with supplementation that you need to know and that people sometimes people don't talk about or they don't know. First guys, it's important that you use supplements on every feeding. Every time guys, make sure that you're dusting your, uh, your flies, your crickets, whatever you're feeding your dart frogs, dust them with a multivitamin, a calcium powder, something like that every time you feed. Now my two frogs that I have, they're adults, they're five years old. I don't feed them every day. I feed them like every other day or so. Um, and I dust every time, every time. So make sure you do that because it is very important. Now, now a lack of supplementation can cause health issues in your frogs like short tongue syndrome, spindly leg syndrome, and other conditions which could negatively impact your frog's health, their eggs, and offspring health. In some cases, it could cause death. So yes, it is very important to supplement your flies because if you're not, if you're just giving them straight up fruit flies every time you feed, you're not dusting them, they aren't getting the proper minerals, the proper vitamins they need, your frogs will begin to develop health issues and they could ultimately die. Um, so you definitely need to supplement. This is just one of the key things with feeding your frogs that you need to do. Now last, other important note I want to talk about is that vitamin supplements expire, guys. It's not really marked on here. It says Best Buy. Usually it gives you a year date on most vitamin supplements. But let's be real, guys. Vitamins usually expire within six-month period. Okay, yeah, it's six months. This, these are no good. Now, why are they no good? Well, the vitamins and minerals, they tend to break down over time and they lose their potency and effectiveness. So I'm gonna give you two tips in order to help you from stop from using expired vi vitamin supplements. First, write yourself the month and the day on the tops of your lids. I have it here on my DendroCare. It is April 21st of this year, so I'm gonna have to replace it here in a, in a month. And then my vitamin A, that's April 30th. Again, I'm gonna have to replace it by next month. Now, by writing that down on my supplements, I now know that I have to order new supplements before those dates, and then once I get them, throw these guys out. It doesn't matter if I have all the bottle, half the bottle, a little bit left. Um, it doesn't matter what I have in here. It's no good anymore, guys. It bro the vitamins, the minerals, they've broken down. They aren't going to be potent anymore. They're not gonna do your frogs any good. So you might as well just get rid of them, toss them out, and get yourself fresh ones, and it'll be very beneficial for your frogs. Now, I use DendroCare, and I've noticed, I've switched from Rapashi. They are, my frogs are livelier. Um, they move around a lot. I'm watching Constantine right now. He is exploring the new Biopod setup. He is just going everywhere. Um, it's kind of fun to watch, but I, I've been using this for a couple years now. Love it. It's a great supplement. Um, so there you go. Now the second, the second tip to help your vitamins uh, life expectancy, if you will, is to put them in the fridge. I know that sounds weird, guys, and you might have, uh, you know, roommates, a wife, your parents, whatever, your, whoever your living situation is, they might get weirded out by you keeping these in the fridge, um, but it's just vitamin supplement. It's not like you're keeping insects or anything live in there, but keep it in the fridge because the cooler temperatures help in aiding the vitamins and minerals from breaking down faster because if you keep it in warmer temperatures, room temperature and warmer, the vitamin and minerals, they tend to break down, they lose their effectiveness, they aren't fresh anymore, and then basically you just have powder that's not adding anything for your frog's health. So there's the two tips for doing that. Remember, your vitamin supplements, they do expire within six month time. Write down the expiration or when you got them, when you pop that lid open, write down that date on the top of your lids 
six months from that day. And then when you see that date on your lid, you know that the six month period is up and you definitely need to order before it expires. That way you get your guys some fresh vitamin supplements. And then keep them in the fridge, helps from them from breaking down, it keeps them fresher longer and helps them last for that six month period. All right, my ninjas, this is just gonna be a quick video. I'm gonna show you how I feed my frogs with Ta-da, DendroCare. Now, we take the DendroCare, simple as that, you pop the top. It's a white substance, it's a white powdery substance. You're gonna get it on your hands, on whatever. Don't worry about it. I have a cup here. This is a 32 ounce cup. I sprinkle a little bit in. That should be enough, because they're just flies. You don't need a lot. It's not like you're feeding crickets or roaches or anything like that. Swirl that up a little bit, and as you can see, that's what it looks like. All right, next guys, I'm gonna add some fruit flies to You're gonna get them everywhere, just tap them in. Um, this is very liquidy right now, unfortunately, so I gotta change up my the way I keep keeping them down there. Um, I don't need a whole lot because I'm only feeding two frogs. They say to feed your frogs enough uh, flies that fit on to a dime, each frog per frog, so there you go. All right, guys, if you can see that, they are properly dusted. You just dump them in, you give them a little swishy shake, and then they're all covered. Next thing I like to do is I take said flies, I have another separate cup, it's empty, and then I tap said flies into cup. Now I fed them yesterday so I didn't give them a whole lot, but I'm just doing this for the purposes of the video and they, they always love to eat. And they are in the new enclosure, so we want to make sure that they're eating. And then you're gonna get a couple stubborn flies that wanna stay at the bottom, but now we just have the powder. All the excess powder, it is no longer in there, so we don't have to worry about that. Now I've got my flies in here. There is a little bit of excess powder in here, but don't worry guys, because you're gonna not just try to dump that into your tank, because if you leave the vitamin powder, it does burn through your moss, um, and you don't want that to happen. So, and it burns your plant leaves as well. So try to get as little bit of vitamin supplements in to your tank as possible, but make sure you get all your feeder insects in there. All right guys, lastly, the easiest and probably the funnest part to using fruit flies is feeding them to your fr frogs. Now I just tap a little in, I'll tap some here, because Constantine's over here, and then I will tap some over here, because the female, is freaking out right now. So actually I will tap them on the log. And there you go guys. Easy peasy. Flies are in there. As you can see they're nice bright they're nice bright white, covered in vitamin dust and there you go. My frogs are being shy right now because I just moved them into the biopod on Tuesday. So right now they really aren't feeling super comfortable with the new setup. Um, they're still figuring it out, finding places to go, finding places to hide, what have you. Um, but this is it. Uh, I was hoping I was gonna get them feeding for you guys, but right now they aren't. Let me cut away from this and then I'll, maybe I'll cut back, hold on. And we're back. Check out the hunter stalking his prey. Come on, Constantine. Go for him. You know you want to. Go for him. This is good, guys, because I haven't seen him eat really yet since I moved him in on Tuesday. The female has eaten some phoenix worms and some flies the other day, uh, and he was too busy singing, calling, exploring, and climbing to give a 
crap about what I was doing. Um, and here you have him now feeding. I don't want to get too close because again, they're kind of jumpy right now because I did have to usher them into cups when I caught them and I think that freaked them out because usually I don't bother them and they don't mind me coming in their tank. They'll sit there while I'm messing around and I think they're a little gun shy because they think they're going to be touched again. But uh, there you go. That's Constantine, my lone male. And there's my female. She's coming out. She ate a lot yesterday. I'm not worried about her eating today. I was, this is more for his benefit. And it's good to see that uh, him exploring and everything has kind of gotten his appetite back up. So there you go, guys. That's how easy it is to feed your frogs. As you saw there, he unfortunately must have gotten a piece of debris or something on his tongue. And he wasn't quite happy about that. But he's fine. So there you go. And there she is kind of just doing her thing. All right, guys. Signing off.